right, 7 o'clock, we're going to call the meeting to order. And uh, we're going to look to John here to open us in prayer tonight. Well, thank you, Jim. If we could bow our heads, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we're able to come here tonight and to take a look at the business of Georgetown Township. We pray for your wisdom and your guidance, Lord, and just please be with us. On the snowy evening, we, we think of our, our police patrols out there, our sheriff patrols, and our plowing of the, the roads, and our fire department when there's special calls, and we just pray that you'll be with those people and keep them. We thank you for all the good people here at Georgetown Township that serve. Also, Lord, we, we look at our nation and we look at the challenges that we have, and we pray that you'll help us with our economy and possibly what's happening overseas, Lord. We pray that you'll be there and strengthen our leaders to make wise decisions. We also pray, Lord, for Georgetown Township as we, we look for new leadership and we'll be doing some investigating next week and we just thank you so much for Dan that's de dedicated his life to Georgetown Township decade after decade and his incredible leadership. May we be fortunate. We thank you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. And let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, and move the flag down. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the, the flag. flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for which, for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. Maybe see that <coughs> all of us are present. I uh, appreciated in my absence last time, Ryan filling in and <coughs> incapable hands. I was trying to think. I think I missed one meeting my first term as supervisor, and then now one this term and I'm going to miss the next one. That one I planned on and knew of. So I'll be back in your capable hands again, I think, Ryan. Um, but I'm told those are the shortest meetings in the past five years and I don't know if that means you're going to be nice. Uh, you're going to bring that up. I, I thought I would just help you out here. <laughs> okay, well, 16 minutes just to let you know. I'm not, sure, <laughs> I'm not sure it's my talking. It's maybe it's uh, allowing you guys to talk to me. So. All right. Um, item five then. Approval of the agenda tonight. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion about that? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda is approved. Okay. Item number six. Communication letters and reports received for information. It's always interesting. And item seven. We have just one person here I know who wants to speak to us tonight. It's not actually on the agenda, but I'd ask that you indulge him in the opportunity to to address us in this first public comment period, that being Mr. Slaw. Is that okay, everyone? All right. Typically, we reserve that for agenda items and, and the second public comment for other things. But we're no, I don't think it's going to be a long meeting, but still, I think let's just have you right here in the front end, Brad. So thanks for coming. Good deal. I'll plan on staying for the end of the meeting anyway, so oh, okay. again, unless you guys go for hours and hours tonight as opposed to what I saw in the minutes of last several meetings. Okay. So, um, just wanted to come introduce myself tonight. Uh, some of you I've met and we've had a chance to share. I've, some of you have not met. Um, so thank you for allowing indulging me, I guess, uh, and giving me a chance to do this. I'm a Hope College graduate, um, back a ways. Um, I spent about 20 years in the banking industry and then found a new life, and that was in public service. Um, and uh, so I've been the township supervisor for Zealand Township for roughly six years, uh, then moved over and uh, became the Ottawa County Treasurer, spent close to 12 years as the county treasurer, and then I spent uh, the last uh, really three and a half years or three years plus um, as the state legislator. Um, and that was for the 90th district, which ended at your west border. Um, I now have been, they took Holland away and they made this the 85th district and said, okay, now Jenison, Georgetown Township is part of your, your the district you're going to have a chance to run for. And so I'm here tonight to let you know that I am running for that district. I put my name in, I filed. Um, at this point in time, nobody else has filed to run against me. I'm sure that that will happen at some point in time. Um, and they've got until April, I think, 19 to be able to turn that in. Um, on this Valentine's Day, just to make sure that you all know, I've, I'm married to my first wife um, for 37 years, and we're, uh, I'm intended to stay there until as long as she'll keep me, so I'm hoping that'll be at the end of my days. Um, and once again, I'm seeking the 85th District. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you've got um, now or in the future. I'll try and drop off business cards before you guys all leave. So, Well, what do they say about us, Brad? Come on, we have to have a reputation that you've... 
encountered? Okay. We've got to now court the voters in, in Georgetown. What's our reputation? Well, your reputation is that you do things well. I mean, it's when you've got people like Dan Carlson sitting at the at the side of this dais saying, here's here's what you really need to know and here's how to make it happen. Um, Dan and I go way back as the county treasurer. He and I interacted a whole bunch, um, or fairly regularly anyway. So um, you guys are, have been doing the right thing. I anticipate there isn't anything different today. That's a good reputation. Anyone? Oh, still 44 seconds. Good. like that kind of politician. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, seeing no one else, we're going to close the initial public comment period. And we'll move on to item eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Anyone wish to remove an item from that agenda? None. All in favor say aye. 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 When opposed? Just passed. Okay. Item nine, short town fire department requests for two sets of battery operated extrication tools such as I see sitting next to Chief back there. Uh, is there a motion to place this on the floor? And then I think we may invite uh, Chief Dan to come forward. I'll make the motion to approve the purchase of two sets of battery-operated extrication tools at the quoted price. Support. Okay, moved and supported. And at this time, uh, Chief Hamming, would you be willing to... Uh... It's just if you have questions. Oh, well, he brought it, and I thought, you can't bring <laughs> a cool piece of equipment like that, at least not come up and... If you, yeah, if you wanted to pull your car around, he would demonstrate I how it works. I wanted to take him with a microphone and just, you know, pinch that thing off. <laughs> and let me try it. Oh, really? It's incredibly heavy. <laughs> but not for him. It's like a modified leaf blower. <laughs> so, again, what you have before you is two sets of battery-operated extrication tools. Uh, just to go back to what we currently use, it's, it's the same... Jaws, cutters, rams, that type thing. The only thing, it's, it runs off a gas motor uh, with a hydraulic pump and then a reservoir for the, for the oil. Uh, there's two 30-foot uh, hoses that go off the motor that will operate pretty much one at a time. Um, there are times you can try it with two of them, but it, it kind of slows everything down. Um, the older system is more manpower intensive, as in you got to carry the motor, carry the jaws, carry carry the ram. This uh, type of setup here um, pretty much works off a battery. A uh, simple battery you can get at Gimmons. And uh, instead of uh, uh, using the hydraulics, these don't even have hydraulics in it. And um, it's a lot more user-friendly, I guess, the best way to put it. Um, the motor uh, on, that we currently use, I use the analogy of walking up to a neighbor when he's mowing his lawn. You have to shut the mower down to, to, to uh, listen to what he's saying. This is a, this, the older system is the same scenario on an incident. Um, we communicate quite a bit with uh, with the E-unit deputies that are there, with AM, uh, the ambulance companies that are there, and with that motor running, it's almost impossible. So this here is uh, is very quiet. I'll simulate it to you in a minute, but uh, um, I would recommend two sets of battery-operated tools. The current ones we have now, are we are those going in on trade? Is that what I understand? Those will go in on a trade, yes. yes. Yep. These would be the only two we own then. Pardon? These would be the only two that we own then. We've got, uh, we've got the, uh, another, this came from Station 2 on Church Street. Each station, each three stations have an extrication tool. Oh. Where this, the battery operated right now is down on Church Street. And so the remaining two would go to stations one and three, so that every same battery operated one. These two tonight, one will go at station three on 36, and the second one will go on station one on 44th and 14th. Do you get the exact same power out of that as you do the hydraulic? Oh, yeah. Do you? If you look here, 
Because so not only is Jaws, if the cutter is in here, if I just want the cutter, I could do it. But, uh, it's like the green chair. <laughs> and it's got a gas it's, it's got the jaws, it's got a ram, it's got the, another jaws that's a little bit bigger. So uh huh. Do we have any questionable chairs we can talk about? <laughs> okay, <I'm>, <laughs> <laughs> questionable chairs that we can <laughs> you know as a layperson if you said like as on the price is right what do you think that goes for I'd say not to exceed you know 15,000 bucks or something well, but, they're, yeah, but they're actually about 50 is that right well that's, <clears throat> that's total yeah. you know for one station yeah surprised me I count as that. That's not made by Milwaukee, though, is it? No, well, it's Genesis. And what the what the thought would be uh, once we get them in service would probably be about four months. Um, we'll get a few cars and we'll put them at station three, and then we'll invite the board down. Uh, we'll put a set of turnouts, get you all the safety stuff, and we'll let you we'll let you tear a car apart with it. Oh my gosh! I can't wait. Deal. <laughs> Okay. So you can get, get the feel of what it is. <coughs> it get heavy after a while. It was quieter than I thought. Yeah. Just make sure you keep the batteries charged. As a, as a guy who owns like 50 battery operated tools, that's my biggest beef. You know, if we, do, if we do get on a lengthy expectation, we do have a, what they call a battery pack, mm -hmm. where you can plug it right in the back here, and it, it uh, it's a big box that's charged up that will get you a couple hours on it. Okay. Do you need it? Sell them. Very nice. Impressive. Yeah, that's cool. Any other questions for the chief? All right. Any other comments among the board? No? All right. Hearing none. Appreciate it, chief. Thank you. Uh, there's a motion before you. All in favor, say aye. 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 One opposed? That item is passed. Number 10, this is the July 22, uh, 2022 constituent survey. Uh, I'm not sure, is there, a, is there a motion to be advanced here, or is this more of a discussion point? Just a discussion point? Oh, okay. All right. I had actually just had asked to have this as part of the discussion point, but we can have it as an agenda point. Um, I wanted to bring it up as a discussion for the broader board, um, something that I think we probably should get some direction on, um, and it's, as it relates to the scope of the survey, we've been doing a lot of good discussion and work in services um, as far as the mechanics of the survey, um, but it, at least to me, it got to a point where we're having um, sort of a fork of the road of do we do one survey per household and truly um, tag it to the tax bill and they can either do it via the paper or QR code or do we extend it beyond um, one person per household and it's, you know, whoever is in the household plus 18 years old and kid and things like that. So it felt like it that component um there's a there's a a lot to it and um wanted to bring up for just discussion honestly on how everybody felt about that um before we got too far down the road, knowing that next services meeting we're gonna have the questions kinda come in and we have to start parallel pathing timing and questions and mechanics. So um that's generally why I wanted to put on the discussion for today. Okay. My opinion, which I shared in services, was if I filled out a survey like this and if my husband did, the answers would be very different. Um, and so I don't love the idea of limiting it to one per household, like um, like we send it with your tax bill and the way that we get it back has to be that piece of paper or something like that. Um, I think that different adults under one roof might have different perspectives and we 
owe it to our community to consider everyone's perspective and not have um, <clears throat> arguments within a house of, of whose voice was going to be the one that was shared. Um, but that's just my two cents. <clears throat> Has anybody done a, um, what it's going to cost to do a survey like this? Any ideas? So I think we're, well, you're looking at a few different options for the online element. Um, and then we have, like, the paper element, which we'd have to bake into there, too. You have ballpark. Until yeah. you decide those things, you're looking at somewhere between two to 5,000. If it looks, you know, depending on how the questions are, tabulation looks like that could be kind of time consuming. Uh, we would hope that the tabulation of the survey would be inputted, um, not via paper, but via uh, some type of electronic one. Okay. The survey monkey, which is very popular, is uh, one we've worked with in the past where people fill their answers on survey monkey and that does the tabulation for us. So, but it also gives more freedom for more people to you know, to try to answer the questions depending on what restrictions you put in place. Yeah. I think it's kind of similar to voting. I think everybody should have a say so within a household. I don't think it should be limited to just one. Because exactly what kind of what Becky said, I'm gonna want different things than probably my wife would. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it I don't think you would want to limit to just one person, one input per household. Um, I mean, the way you can kind of do it around that would be uh, you could probably just do like name and address that you can cross-reference and kind of cross-reference that way. The only thing I would say, if you do like more of a survey monkey, <clears throat> there's no way to really track to make sure that individual that's doing it. That's the only thing. They do more of a digital style. They do provide a little bit of digital tracking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you want, where you could see like 300 surveys came from the same IP address or something to that effect. So, um, but that analytics costs a little more. Mm -hmm. And so if you want that analytics, you, you can do that. Um, you could place a limitation, you know, just a higher one, like say 10 per IP address, um, if you wanted. Uh, but that does cause a problem, you know, cause like, you know, certain large employers may use the same IP address and you know, may cause that, or say a Waterford or a Sunset, you know, so that's where you gotta be real careful when you do that, you could cause some unknown issues. I think we'd probably want to, depending on the price, bust up on the analytical element, being that we're trying to uh, make it as easy as possible for our constituents to fill this out, whether they wanna to choose to do it digitally with the QR code and then SurveyMonkey or in paper, I envisioned, um, a bit of adjudication process at the end. We talked about it in services where, you know, maybe we take the the tax roll um, and kind of just go and ensure there isn't any double dippage between the paper and the online. Like Dan says, not there aren't 10 or 300 coming from one household. That it makes some sort of logical sense that okay, three people from this address clearly it's a you know partnership and <coughs> 18-year-old kid, you know, that had filled it out. But there's just at the back end, we're going to want to be, um, I think, very um, diligent in ensuring that we have an accurate representation and there's a double dippage happening uh, within responses so that it doesn't, you know, affect the skew of the results. I mean, it kind of sounds like if everyone's kind of in that, if you have the direction you're looking for, you want to be able to allow multiple people. Is that kind of what the consensus is? Yes. To so allow like everyone to be able to participate. <coughs> so it looks like you have that direction. So there would still be the availability if somebody wanted to do a paper survey rather than online? Yeah, yeah. you will. You, you just, you encourage the online version, but... You do, but the yeah. people just aren't online. Yes, and then and well, sir, you certainly have to accommodate paper for those who want to. Yeah, you get yeah, people in that, that age range, I just don't have that. I think, um, Bob, you were saying about like 7,000 of our of our taxpayers actually come in and pay physically their tax bill or something along those lines. I don't know if I have the number right or not, but you think about that. I don't think it's that high. That Okay. Was it 5,000? I can't remember. We said well, it in services. Well, it depends what method you consider coming in. A large number of that people come in to hit the drop box on their way through. Okay. So they might put the survey in the same way. Uh, 
in the past, people doing multiple surveys was not the struggle we were trying to deal with, just so you know. Getting people to do the survey was, was the whole, <coughs> it wasn't about, um, I mean, you might have had some doubling up, but I'm not, that's, our focus was how many people you could get to participate. All right. Um, and if someone voted, if you went in twice, it, it's possible, but it was, that was not the focus of trying to get, you know, to get more valuable data, we needed more participation. And uh, so we certainly struggled uh, with any loose piece of paper, you know. So. Dan, in the past, wasn't the surveys, when surveys were done, wasn't it quite a small number we'd get back? I think our best one was just under 1,000, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, one. Like that's somewhere in the 700 to 1,000 range. That was our best ever. Yeah, I was thinking it was like 300, 350. Yeah, it's hard to remember the exact details. So I okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. 1,000 would be a good... I think it was around 700 to 1,000, somewhere in there. I, just, I mean, it's been quite a while, so it's hard to know. Yeah. So. I mean, we would have a stack at the library, a stack here for people who are, you know, to, to be able to get the information, so. <clears throat> and that would be the question I guess I have is, if there is a stack at the library, if we have patrons who don't live here, who come here from Wyoming or whatever, they would have to put in their name and address. I think they want name and address for everyone, yeah. yeah. I think that's a good key to help. Yep, and that was, so. I guess, my only concern. I like the idea of, you know, this discussion is, you know, do we just limit it to people who have skin in the game? If you're not paying any taxes, it's, are we going to let people that don't even pay taxes give input on something? Of course, who wouldn't want stuff for free when it doesn't cost you anything? Yeah. So that would that would be the issue. But as long as we have some sort of qualifier that it has a... Yeah, I think you're going to have to be careful when you're evaluating the data you receive based on the, the number of participants. I think you're going to have to make smart choices even after you get the survey done to to decide whether... You know, if you get a thousand surveys and 400 people want something out of a thousand, you, you have to be careful how you extrapolate that to the 55,000 people. Of course. And so. That's in, that's the inherent danger in this, right? Right. That's why you have to just, you just have to realize that going in is you're gaining input, you're gaining. It's a resource. Uh, what you're looking from and you just have to take mm -hmm. the data that you get and then evaluate it at that point and, uh, you know, based on what you receive, so. Do you think it's worth, um, Toward the end, once we get everything in from the paper and then from the survey monkey, that we have like a um, like an oversight committee that, from each department that looks at it and just says, "Yep, this makes sense." That this, yep, you know, go. This looks non-nefarious. This looks clean. This looks good. Or like well, we that's can what start. I think the analytics can help you with um, for that side. Uh, for the digital side, right? Yeah, I think the paper side. Um, um, the three of us could get it done in an hour. When we, <laughs> so you never know. Never know, but yes. Um, okay. So I think it's going to be primarily I, digital, anyways. I'm just saying. Like just, you're, you're we're going to bet over a beer, and if I <laughs> win, <laughs> I mean, it depends. We haven't seen the questions yet, so when you the questions are going to determine a lot of the participation. It's going to determine a lot of whether we have to uh, look at paper and how how that's participating and how it goes. So. I was looking at just just generally how mass surveys, like a good key performance indicator benchmark for responses, um, is about 14%. So if we have 54,091 in our community, and that's, that includes residents at some sunset and everything, right? That's everybody, right? Yeah, and you got to knock off probably 8,000 or 9,000 who are under 18. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Wait, <laughs> eight. But we'll want to take 14% you know, yeah. of 18 and older. Yeah. Um, which, my math, I only did the total, so it looks like there's, well, about 25% of the township is under 18. So 14,000 yeah, so is take under 18. Account, yep. yeah. So you got 14,000 is under 18. Oh, well, 14, so people left. <clears throat> yep. Well, um, It'll be an interesting exercise, you know. I think if we ever want to get, I said this before, really serious, we pay 20 grand and have it done scientifically by a third party. Uh, but I think this will be an inexpensive way to at least get a barometer and find some interesting comments and feedback, and then decide what, if anything, you do with a particular, you know, point of view. So I, I do have, I do have a couple of concerns when it comes to questions on the survey. 
Um, when you go to Visions for Hope for Sidewalks and you just plug in Rose at Elementary School, um, I, I think that's kind of zeroing on one area. Um, seems to me if we're going to do sidewalks, do the whole township. I probably wouldn't be opposed to a, the, the question of whether we want a path that benefits the whole township that goes from 8th Avenue Park. When we start zeroing on one thing, it's the same thing with acquisition of more green space near Woodcrest Park. There's only one piece of property that can be acquired. If I know at Woodcrest, so you're basically saying, we want to do this, but if, I think you're putting pressure on an individual that owns that property. Gary, this is my whip. It probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, but I'm just not being asked to do I'm these things out because yeah. surveys can can be leading right. in a way. they got to be. They have, the committee hasn't reviewed the question. No, yet. I didn't, but I'm bringing it up now so that. Yeah, no, they certainly can be. It's a lot easier to yeah. say now than when you say, I don't want to, I'm, nobody can ever accuse me of saying, I wish you would have said that earlier. Yeah. But there you go. So that's all I'm saying. I 100% agree. Yeah, and that would be my comment, too, is just that the questions not be leading. Yep. All right. We give them options to say spend no money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've never done that. It's just like we're going to spend it on this, this, or this. This one we're going to say yep. or do nothing. No, I, I'm just laying it out there. Well, it's worth even though we're not looking at the questions this evening, I was pleased to see about four of my ideas from the last goal session that didn't get a vote. Make their way on there. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> if they get a vote, it was like lower well, we'll some. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a filler. Yeah. And you brought up a good point, Jim. The last time we had this, which is, I think, the best way to tackle this is, of course, feed services. And then Becky, um, John, and myself can field those questions in, and then we provide a couple to survey options back to you guys to look at and pick and vote on. So that you, you know, the board sees a few options. Okay. Okay. No, well, thank you. And thanks for giving some direction, board, on that question. Yes. Second public comment period this evening. Does anyone wish to come and address the board? Got three minutes to do so. All right. A few smiles, but no one getting up. So we'll close the second public comment period. Item 12, discussion and general information among the board. Anyone have any items of discussion or information you'd like to share with us? So Denison Historical Association is celebrating 50 years um, this year, and they're starting to put together some plans for um, a summer event just to kind of recognize, you know, what the Historical Association has done for our community. So I just kind of wanted that on your radar. Um, one piece in their brainstorming that they had brought up that I would like us to seriously consider is just some sort of resolution acknowledging the role that they play in our community and the good works that they've done. Um, so I'm going to start working on a draft of that, and I hope that when it comes about in a couple of months that we can talk about it and adopt a resolution just recognizing their hard work. Um, but I just kind of wanted to put a bug in your ear about that. There is a very little bit of information in our um, meeting packet for tonight from the Historical Association, but they're still in the brainstorming and initial planning stages. So. Good idea. Sounds good. Good idea. <coughs> Sorry. Anyone else? February 2, I was uh, sworn in to the Grand Valley Metro Council. Yeah. Know, know that also, I mean, because it's kind of passing the torch, mm -hmm. know that we do have, because of our census, we do have another spot, too. So if anybody ever wanted to join me, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. I think it's only once a quarter. So, but yeah. I'll be able to keep you guys posted with anything that happens from there. Thanks for doing that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. Got a voice. Anyone else? All right. I would remind you, it's not too late, gentlemen. Turning at this time to do right by your spouse on this Valentine's Day. Turn close. We got our meeting yet after this. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. All right. Favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Meetings adjourned.